It may be a day late, but the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series is back at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway for its sixth race of the season. This is the UAW Daimler Chrysler 400 for the first race on a Monday in quite some time in the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series. I'm Joe Rakowski, joined alongside Trey Bardo, who's won here multiple times in the NASCAR Cup Series. Trey, it's great to be back in the city of Las Vegas, but under some different weather than we're used to seeing here. Normally, Las Vegas, one of the best destinations to go to in terms of weather, but Trey, yesterday on Sunday, the, 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 the sky opened up, the clouds poured down rain all day, had to cancel all activity for the day at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Luckily, it's not it, it's not perfect weather today. It's very cloudy, very overcast, but no rain in the forecast. We're going to get all 54 laps in here today. Yeah, it was... Um, I wasn't used to it, Joe. I really didn't know what to do whenever we had everything canceled. I, I was... I was kind of lost, but um, luckily now we're, we're able to get this thing in. And I mean, if you just look outside, it is a very, very gray and just dreary type of day outside. And uh, these drivers are going to, you know, they had one strategy going into this race. They're probably going to change it up because the track's going to be so, so different than what they uh, what, what they got to see. Yeah, I was going to ask that, Trey, with, uh, you know, we haven't, these drivers have never had a race get rained out to the next day. They never had a track get completely wiped clean with rubber off the racetrack. So you've had a few instances of that in your career. What is that like going into the next race, knowing there's no rubber on the racetrack, you have to go figure it out. Tire work could be very, very crucial this first run because you're gonna be laying the rubber down the racetrack. Yeah, I mean, any sort of grip or whatever could ultimately be just gone. So going into the first set of corners or even, you know, back into three and four is gonna be a uh, big guessing game for everyone because they don't know what what's going to happen or how their cars are going to react and like you said they're going to be the ones laying the rubber down so tire management and and you know car handling management is going to be the biggest thing in this first run until we get down to pit stops and then they can really adjust from there but uh, it's going to be a uh, be an interesting thing to see how these drivers essentially kind of figure this out for the first time in their careers yeah it's gonna be fun to watch we'll have to see if uh if some teams can make adjustments on pit stops to ensure that their car's good when the rubber's laid down for the end rather than maybe have their cars handling over the first run but also some exciting news here this weekend is that this is the first nextel challenge race of the season a five race series where one driver has a chance to win 19 million dollars and that one driver is whoever wins this race here today trey so how the nextel challenge goes the driver who wins today is the only driver that can get that $19 million bonus. If a driver wins two of the five Nextel Challenge races, it could be anyone in the field that wins two of those five, they get $1 million. If they win three of the five, they get even more. If they win four of the five, even more. If they win all five races, they get more money to add on. So, Trey, that's going to be exciting to see. I think it's uh, $1 million for two wins, $2 million for two wins, and then something like $5 million for three wins, $10 million for four wins. That all adds up to $19 million over the course of five races, Trey. Uh, this could be fun to watch. It, it kind of makes you want to get back in the car, Joe. That's, that's a lot of money right there on the line. Yeah. That is a uh, that, that could change an organization around real quick. Yes, it could. So uh, we'll have to see which driver is going to be the one to qualify for that. Now, once again, there's other prize money to be won, right? So even if someone wins this one and they don't win any of the other ones, while no one will get the 19 million, there's still a chance for a million dollar prize tag, a five million dollar prize tag. So there's still chances to win money for those drivers. So we'll have to see how uh, how aggressive they might be towards the end if they're up there at the front trying to go f to be that one driver to qualify for the 19 million dollar prize tag over the course of five races this season in the Nextel Challenge. We'll take a look at the track facts here for the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. As mentioned, a very cloudy, dreary day out here in Las Vegas, Nevada. 72 degrees and a bit of wind out here at the racetrack. This is a one half mile racetrack like we saw last week at Atlanta. That's 2.41 kilometers. 54 laps, which is 81 miles. The fuel window is 30 to 33 laps. We'll see how that plays out and how much the tires wear over the course of that first run in the race. And a lot less banking than we saw last race at Atlanta. 12 degrees in the corners, 9 degrees on the front stretch, 3 degrees on the back stretch. There's going to be a lot more lifting in the corners than we saw last week at Atlanta. Let's see how that plays into the race here today for the UAW Daimler Chrysler 400. The eight drivers that went home and did not qualify for this race, luckily they didn't have to stay stay around for the rain yesterday. 09 Skyler Taylor, 14 John Barrymore, 22 of Nathan Baird, 41 Nathan Ormond, 49 of Colin Teague, the 50 of Marcus Lerb, the 51 of Joe Staubs, and the 59 of Tegan Fox. Those were the eight that went home, but we still have 42 here ready to play in Las Vegas in Sin City. 
let's go down the trackside, fire the cars up for the UAW Daimler Chrysler Ford to race number four of the 2004 Nextel Cup Series season. Let's get it started. Drivers, start your engines! A great command to get everyone fired up for the race one day late on Monday here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Trey, we have to go a little bit further back to find your pick to win. It was my pick to win last week. Eli Brent, number eight, he nearly got it done. He led a lot of laps last week, but fell short at the end. But Trey, his average finish at Las Vegas over the course of his career, 27.3, has never scored a top 10. Why do you think he has a chance to break that here today and get to victory lane? Uh, I, I know the numbers don't sound the best, right? Numbers don't lie, but you know what, Joe? I, I just think it's a it's a weird occasion here, right? Starting on a Monday, it, it's it's an it's an off day, right? So I mean, that just means that we're gonna have a uh, a weird day for Eli, and I don't think he's gonna get a top ten. And that top ten, it's gonna be a win. And my pick to win a little bit further up in the field, starting in fourth place, 29, Sebastian Kukulan. He led a lot of laps, the most laps in 2002, but fell short to teammate Comrade Evans. Last season, his teammate Justin Atkins, who starts right behind him, found victory lane in this race. Back in 2000, Trey, you found victory lane in an RCR car. In three of the four Las Vegas races uh, broadcasted by JRTV, RCR won. I think Kukulon continues that and wins here today. The pace car is in MB2 or on the front row. Evan Hunter, Tim Gary, this is the green flag one day late at Las Vegas. Well, Trey, Evan Hunter had all day yesterday to think about how he was going to start this race, and it worked out. He blasted away from the field. They go three wide behind. Jerry Chen moves to the inside of Tim Gary for a second. Jericho behind him, three wide for about 10th place. As Evan Hunter leads the first lap easily for pole position. Yeah, so now, you know, they got through the, the, the first lap, right? Everything's fine, but you can see these guys are, are trying to figure out where they can go, trying to spread up, not, not to hit each other and stuff like that because they're still trying to figure out what this track wants to do. I mean, it could be totally different than, like I said, than what they're used to. So they're still trying to, that was a close call right there between the 97 and 20, but yeah, they're still trying to trying to really figure it out. And they're, they're, the biggest thing is, is that how fast are these tires gonna fall off? Jericho for second place, Justin Nackett's down to the inside of teammate Kukulon and Tim Gary. In front of them, Mitchell Collins in the number 12 moves up to fourth place. Atkins going for fifth. Their uh, RCR teammate Sarah Kircher started inside the top 15. She's moving up on the inside. Right behind her coming on the inside is our points leader, Jay Brando, who's found a way to continue to finish very well this season, looking for another top 10 on the season. It'll be his fifth top 10 in the first six races this season. Brando moving up on the inside. They're all trying to chase down Evan Hunter, who still leads from pole position here at Las Vegas. Yeah, I, this is strange. You have the leader who's out by himself, a pack of three cars, and you got a pack of what is that? Seven cars right there, all about to be uh, about to be nine or ten. Yeah, they're all they're all coming up onto this pack. Matthew Burnett, winner of the last race at Atlanta, moving up nice in the inside. Tyler Belladonna backing up on the outside. Then Lathan Strickland, who won a few races to go at Rockingham for Hendrick Morris Sports, is moving down to the inside. And their other teammate, Keegan Thompson, had speed in practice, not as fast in qualifying, but he's starting to move his way up through the field, bringing Jordan Stout with him. Stout's a driver who's had a very dismal start to the season trade. We thought after his great run at the Rockingham Speedway that maybe he would recover. But four of his five starts to the season trade have been outside the top 30. Yeah, definitely not the uh, not not what they were looking for there, but uh, that's it's still, it's still a long way in the season. We got to go here, Joe. Yes, it is. It's Jay Brando, Stout's teammate and points leader. Goes three wide on two RCR cars of Sarah Kirchner and Sebastian Kukulon. Making the move down to the inside work. He's going to grab the spot from Kirchner into turn one. And might grab the spot from Kukulon through turns one and two. Up in front of that, Luke Rainey goes three wide on Mitchell Collins, who's never had a top ten at Las Vegas in his career. And Jerry Chen making his first ever start here at Las Vegas. They're three wide for third place down the back straightaway. Up at the front, Evan Hunter and Chris Jericho have gotten away from this mad scram of cars as they all battle off turn number four. Look how close they come together for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all the way back to about 15th place in this pack. Yeah, this is uh, this is very interesting right here. I mean, all this battling is, is allowing the front two to try to, try to or really to get away there a little bit. But uh, it really, I'm, I'm more curious to see that what's going to happen later in this run. Are these guys going to stay as packed as they are or is it going to spread out a little bit here? As you can see, they're still 
really, really close there. Kirchner kind of checked up there, almost got ran over by that uh, 25 right there, but luckily there was no contact. You can see three, three RCR guys right there, a couple of uh, – uh, Hendrick, guys, you got a DEI in there, MB2, a little, a little bit of everyone. Oh, my God. Kukulon got a great run down the front stretch to get down in front of teammate Kirchner, who gets tight up in front. Atkins gets tight. So a Kukulon and an RCR sandwich with himself, an RCR driver. You see Tim Gary trying to fight back from that outside pole starting Whoa. position. He drove it to the bottom of Matthew Burnett, makes it stick down low. He's going to grab that spot for the 25. Lathan Strickland is trying to move up there. Stout and Keegan Thompson. Good run through the field for Jude Martinelli, who started back around 30th place. Martinelli moving up, and so is Riley Spurley, too, who's trying to get up here and continue his great stretch of Las Vegas races. Evans trying to move through the field. So is Roberto Crown Jr. David Dixon still hanging tough just outside the top 20, and a car that started inside the top 10, but a, a team that really isn't there yet to compete for top 10 finishes. Yeah, no, but, uh, they they have not really been up here, but right now they're making it count as much as they can, and uh, holding, holding strong at the moment, though, where, where, where they're at, so it'll be interesting to see if they can uh, continue to hold on there, or if uh, they'll, they'll sl slowly start to continue to fall back here, but uh, right now they're they're definitely making it work. It. See Zachary Delello moving through the field. He started a little bit further back in the field. He's moved up nicely as he always does when he starts at the back. Delello methodically finds a way to work his way to the front. Up at the front of the field, Luke Rennie is to the inside of Jericho. That is for second place on the racetrack. Luke's going to take it away, and that's going to bring the points leader, Jay Randall, up to third. And Randall's now going to look for a second himself, but still trade all this happening behind the pole setter, Evan Hunter, who's continuing to lead from lap one all the way up to the first 10 laps of this race. Yeah, this, this Hunter is kind of, you know, just in the world of his own right now, kind of pacing himself and seeing if anyone else can catch his pace. But right now, I don't think that 36 has much to worry about. Maybe this 97, he's been kind of on a hawk streak at the beginning of the season, but right now they're, they're still kind of, trying to figure out what their car is going to act like. How about if Jay Randall could win here today? He'd win the first three of six races in the season. I mean, that's that, that would be an insane stat. It just shows how strong he's been this season, even while some of his teammates haven't been as strong. Delel has obviously been up there with him. Delel has the better average finish this season. Others like Keyshawn Richardson have fumbled uh, at points. Tyler Belladonna's not had a great season. Neither is Jordan Stout, but Jay Reynolds put it all together so far in the first five races. This is a great battle for ninth place, though. Sarah Kirchner, Eli Bright's going at with Matthew Burnett right behind, and then Two more Hendrick cars of Jerry Chen, who started in third place, and Lathan Strickland, who won two races ago at Rockingham. They're all packed together. That is 11th, 12th, and 13th. And then their other teammate, Keegan Thompson, not too far back as well. Yeah, this is uh, this, this is another track where Hendrick is. Uh, I feel like they're all right. They're they're they kind of go just inside the top 10 type of place, right? Kind of like um, any, any other track like this, Joe. I was gonna think of a name, but then I drew a blank. Well, they're. they're you think about maybe, you know, something like Chicagoland or Kansas, something like that, where they, yeah. they, they run well, they just, it, it struggles to find the race uh, victory pace that they need. Yeah, that's what I was going to go with. I, I had the name in my head, but then I forgot how to pronounce it. It's one of those <laughs> days, Joe. I'm thrown off. Yeah, it's a Monday. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no one, yeah, no yeah, one exactly. likes to work on a Monday. And here we are up in the booth, and here these guys are on the racetrack having to work very hard on a Monday. Yeah, that that's what exactly what it is. I'll, I'll that's what we'll blame it on. It's I'm I'm not doing too good, but the, Joe, our our leader's got a little bit of company with him. Yes, he does. Evan Hunter had pulled away nicely, but Jay Reynolds catching up as the tires start to wear out. Maybe the 97 car has taken care of his tires more than Evan Hunter has. He's closed into about a tenth and a half back. He's brought Luke Rennie and Chris Jericho there with him. So they're, those four are about equally spaced as they race down the back straightaway. Then further back, fifth place is Mitchell Collins. Sixth place is Justin Atkins. Then Kukulon seventh. Gary eighth. Eli Bright is in ninth. And Matthew Burnett is up to tenth. Then you have Kirchner in eleventh. Stout is up to twelfth. Jude Martinelli, as mentioned, back from about 30th place, moving up for 13th on Lathan Strickland, bringing Riley Spurgeon, who didn't start all that well, up to the front with them as well. Riley Spurgeon's record here at Las Vegas, average finish of 14th. So uh, he's he's been very, very decent here over the course of his career, and Riley Spurgeon trying to add another great result. He just moved to 15th by Jerry Chen, and will actually look for 14th, which is his average finish here, on Chen's teammate, Lathan Strickland. Yeah, this is, uh, right now you can see uh, tires are really starting to set in. Everyone's kind of spreading out here, Joe. I mean, it's not the not not the three wide pack pack type, you know, racing we were seeing at the beginning of this thing. Now they're all in, in a space here trying to manage themselves so we get the pit stops. But, uh, well, you know what? As I say that, there's not the three wide move. 
Riley Spurlitz, who made the move down to the bottom. Jordan Stout clears it all. So that's going to put Martinelli up top and Riley Spurlitz down to the bottom, trying to take the spot from the number 77. A little bit further back, see Mathis Wells trying to get back up towards the front. That number 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. Comrade Evans, who won this race in 2002, moved up nicely. And Samet Osgin going for 19th place on Keegan Thompson. Samet Osgin hasn't had a top 20 in 13 races, Trey. Maybe Osgin can change that. He's moving for 19th place on Keegan Thompson up the back straight away. How many races? Uh, the last 13 races, back to Kansas last season. Wow, that's a, uh, that's a long dry spot right there, but uh, definitely seems like he has a car that's moving forward at the moment, so that's what you uh, that's what you like to see, and that could be a good news, but still got a lot of race to go here. As you can see, these guys have not changed position at all, so everyone's kind of in a stalemate again, and, and really, I don't know if they're doing this on purpose or if they just don't have the power underneath their car right now to make a pass. It could be a little bit harder to track like this where there's low banking to make a pass work especially when you have such a good car out in front. If it were maybe someone not as good out in front, you could say, well, maybe they, they, they could easily get by them. But here Evan Hunter has shown to have a really good race car. As we saw he put it on pole and he led all those laps. He pulled away at the start of the race. Jay Reynolds is going to have to work very, very hard to get to him and make a pass work. You can see right there, he closes up to the back bumper. We'll see if he can try and find a way to make a move, make a pass at some point in the next few laps. He's, he's the closest anyone's been to Evan Hunter here today. Yeah, but the real question is, is that where is he going to try to set it up? That you can see he's peeking low through, through one and no, we're in three and four right now, Joe. I am lost right now, but yeah, through three and four he was peeking low. Couldn't make it work on the front stretch, so maybe he could be going for entry into one and two, but I don't think so. Tim Gary further back is uh, Evan Hunter's teammate making a pass for seventh on Sebastian Kukulon with Eli Bright just behind that. Brando is looking at the head of the field, but I think just kind of showing the nose to Evan Hunter saying, listen, I think I'm faster right now. Maybe you should let me go. But Evan Hunter obviously not going to do that. He wants to keep that lead for as long as possible and maybe keep this lead up until pit stops so he knows he gets those five bonus points for leading the most laps out of the way. Yeah, that could uh, definitely be a thing there. No one ever wants to give up the lead half the time. They just make one small mistake and the guy in second is just right there to be able to capitalize on it but uh we'll have to see what develops there as you can see tim gary outside pole sitters kind of falling back but possibly starting to make a little bit of a gain back towards the front maybe that number 10 car set up for the longer run here today and it's starting to show over the course of this green flag run as we're now 22 laps in at the line that's for sixth place on justin atkins up in front is Mitchell Collins, that would be for fifth place. Matthew Burnett behind is looking out on Eli Bright, who was trying to maybe look to the middle of Atkins, but thinks better of it. Gets back in line. That allows Matthew Burnett down to the inside. And Kukulon behind Eli Bright. And then Jordan Stout trying to get up here and get inside the top ten for just the second time this season. Stout moving up right behind Kukulon. That would be 10th, 11th. And then Riley Spurgeon in 12th. Martinelli in 13th with Kirchner 14th. Osgood up to 15th in the number 81 car for Fitz Bradshaw Racing Eli Bright's car. He's still he's still making big moves right here, Joe. He's he's still climbing his way to the front here. So we'll have to see what the, what moves they make on on pit stops here to if they could help that 81 a little bit more, try to be a little bit more faster. See right here, Matthew Burnett going on Justin Atkins a little bit further back in the field. Delello is kind of stabilized in 22nd place, hasn't been able to move forward. Tyler Baladon has dropped back to 24th. Hunter Reed, who finished inside the top five second place last race at Atlanta hasn't been able to move through the field he's stuck in 26th Ahmed Wallet failed at post qualifying inspection twice we'll see what points penalty or what sort of penalty might come from that he's in 27th Justin Zidell who didn't have the greatest starting spot is stuck back in 28th place with Stapleton and Ruiz and you can see down here Jacob Miller stuck down there Angel Gutierrez has dropped back from his top 20 starting spot Benny Lynn has been able to move through the field. Neither is Drew Webb. You see down there, Laura Chung also failed an inspection. She's stuck at the back. Keyshawn Richardson, who started back there, is still stuck back there as well. David Dixon started top 10. He's dropped back. So is Fitzwater. Matt Tuck is back there. So is Max Davis. And Prima McShane is not all that fast and is currently three seconds off the nearest car on the racetrack. As we're nearing the midway point, still Evan Hunter leading every lap from pole position. Great bow for fifth is shaping up. Great bow behind that. Atkins goes up the racetrack. Eli Brent looks to the middle. Jordan Stout goes even lower in the number six. And here comes Kukulon on Burnett and Atkins into turns three and four. Yeah, whoa, that was uh, 25. Looked like he did not have as much going into that corner as he thought. Almost slid up in front of the three there. Now we're going to be three wide off in turn four. How is this going to all settle out here? No one can really make a move. Eli's kind of getting close to that three.
three almost contact, but I don't think they made any. It was it was close, that's for sure. But halfway next time by, Evan Hunter wants to get around to that in the race seat because if he does, he knows he's going to lead the most laps in this race here today. There's still three wide for position down to turns three and four. Atkins still up. Type C, it's kind of created a log jam behind because Ryan Spurgeon caught up. He had to lift. Here comes Martinelli down to the inside. This is some crazy stuff for about 10th place. Yeah, now they finally settled it back out. I think they're back down with two wide here. Actually, that 77 was thinking about making a three wide move, but a lot better of it. Now they're kind of settling it out here, but still, the three is on the top side, so he's probably going to continue to drop back here, though. He's holding kind of strong out there as well. Yes, he is. I think that's because of how the tires are wearing, but we're coming up two pit stops. We're only about a lap two or three away from these drivers coming down pit road. We'll have to see the times have fallen about two seconds off their fastest lap. So Trey, this pit stop could be very, very crucial, especially if you're in the front four. You're within eight tenths of a second of the race leader. If you pit sooner than Evan Hunter, anyone in front, you could cycle out to the race leader if you're Chris Jericho, Luke Reddy, or Jay Brando. Oh, 100%. I mean, strategy is going to be the next biggest thing in this race right now. And uh, the real question is what strategy will be the one to win? And, and, and really, it's only kind of possible for the front four, like you mentioned, because everyone else is, is almost too far back to really gain anything from it. Maybe, you know, these guys can gain on, you know, the, the driver of the 12 car right now. But other than that, I don't think they're close enough to the front four to really make a dent in the, what they uh, what they have right now. Jay Brando for the lead on Evan Hunter on lap number 30. Just before pit stops are set to start. Hunter, though, gets the run off the top of turns one and two. They almost dragged race side by side down the back straightaway. Hunter gets back in line in the lead. Brando's got to sell for second for now. Then Luke Rainey in third. Jericho kind of falling back a little bit in fourth. And then this great battle. Look at that. There were four wide to get around Eli Bright, who was pinning on the bottom lane. That was uh, that was too close for comfort, Joe. I did not like the way that looked. And that was his own Carson Van Osken who was carved away up inside the top ten tray. Is, is he's? It's been what'd you say? Thirteen races. Thirteen races since the top twenty. It might not. Uh, that might it might come to an end today, but we'll have to see. Was Eli the only one to pit that time? I think Eli and some guys towards the back. But Eli was the only one of the front runners. Jay Brando stays out of the front runners. He's going to lead a lap. See back there, they're still close. Holy cow. Wow. That, that, is, uh, that is a busy pit road entry right there. Yes, it's one of the harder ones to get onto. It's it's basically in the middle of the corner. You can see how close that gets as Evan Hunter leads them in to pit road. Jay Brando stayed out. So did Mitchell Collins. As you can see right there. Right there, Mitchell Collins up there, Jay Brando up the road. They're going to be coming in this time, you have to think, though. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's going to stretch it out for one more time around here. We'll have to see, though, a couple guys. Hunter Reed and Tyler Belladonna are going to stay out. So is Drew Webb in the 84. So Hunter Reed's going to lead a lap for five points. Belladonna's out there. Drew Webb's out there. I think they're just trying to avoid a congested pit road and hope that maybe they gain more time with a clean pit road rather than uh, just getting tires on as soon as possible. Which I, I don't disagree with that at all. I mean, I think Eli being one of few at the first time and then these guys being the last ones are definitely the right call right there. I mean, what what's the, uh, do we do we know the time difference between a new set and an old set? It's, it seems about two seconds, a little bit more than that at this point. So we'll have to see how that all plays out as these three hit pit road. Evan Hunter gets out in the lead. And we'll have to see, see Mathis Wells who pitted sooner. He gained a great amount of time. We'll have to see where Jay Brando comes out in relation to Evan Hunter. Remember, Brando pitted a lap later than this number 36. You can see Hunter up to speed. Brando using the access road on the apron of turns one and two. Hunter's going to get to the lead, and he's going to be gone from the rest of the field. Mathis yeah, Wells going to so. jump to second. So it seems like pitting at the uh, middle ground and a little bit before was, was the way to go. Yeah, Mathis Wells, one of the first, and he came down the same lap as Eli Bright. Mathis Wells can move up to second. Luke Gray is going to move to third by Jay Brando. How about Samet Osgin? He's up with this front pack. I don't know what they put in that 81 this week, but it is absolutely working right now, Joe. That, that That's going to be for fifth right there on Jay Brando once this all cycles through because they just passed the 1745-84. He's up to fifth, going for fourth on Chris Jericho into <laughs> turns three and four. I mean, this fifth Bradshaw racing car is flying. He's carving away through the field. That is, this is absolutely insane right now. I don't know where he's going to stop, but I, I kind of want to see how far he can take this, Joe. Yeah, I don't want to see him stop. I want to see him keep <laughs> going up through the field. So as it cycles through, 
We now have, you know, everything cycled through. So these front six are within two seconds of the leader. Two seconds back of them is Jordan Stout in seventh. Keyshawn Richardson, who pitted on the first lap of pit stops, is up to eighth place. He was outside the top 30 all day long. You have Riley Spurgeon now in ninth. And Jude Martinelli, who ran well here last season, is up to 10th. Evans is 11th. Collins back to 12th. Benny Lynn is up to 13th. Angel Gutierrez is inside the top 15. Zach Delellis moved up to the top 20. Burnett's dropped back. Eli Bright's on pit road. There's an issue on the eight car tray. I'm gonna say what I don't. I'm kind of curious where Eli went, but that that explains a lot right there. Is that uh, they are having some sort of, I would assume, mechanical issue. And Ahmed Wallet, who failed inspection twice, is inside the top 20. Hunter Reed has moved up to about 20th. Strickland and Thompson have kind of fallen back. Atkins has really dropped. He's back to 25th, now 26th. Fitzwater and Guo are inside the top 30. Belladonna's back here in 30th. Kircher's outside the top 30. She was up inside the top 15 all day. Jerry Chen's back here in 34th, just like Atlanta last race. Had a good car early on. Hasn't been able to capitalize on that. Eli's five laps down in the number eight car. There's something seriously wrong, but hey, something that's right for the number 20. Mathis Wells is gaining onto the back bumper of Evan Hunter with 17 laps to go. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know where this twenty came from, but uh, he, he made a big jump there with pit stops, and then all of a sudden he's challenging for the race lead right here. We'll have to see what Evan Hunter can really do. We know he's strong on the short run here, but after pit stops with a long green flag run right before them is is a whole different story. So we'll have to see if the thirty six can stay out front or if that twenty is uh, too much to handle. Could it maybe be the opposite of last race where Mathis Wells had a very strong car early on? but fell back after pit stops and never could recover. He went from, you know, whatever it was, first, second place when he came down pit road. He entered out, or he left outside the top 10 and could never get back up to the front of the field. He did end up finishing inside the top 10, but it wasn't as good of a day as it could be. Now here today, he hasn't been around the front all day, but pit strategy worked out in his favor. He's now a tenth and a half back of the race leader, Evan Hunter, as they work through three and four to 15 laps to go. Maybe Mathis Wells can steal it here today, but this is a racetrack, Trey. He's been very good at in his career, and his four starts here, his finishes sixth, first, twelfth, and third. That's an average finish of 5.5 here at Las Vegas for Mathis Wells. I mean, again, the numbers don't lie. You can see right here, he's very strong, but only time's going to be able to tell right here. And someone who's trying to get back up to the lead is this 97, who uh, did not did not make the right call, didn't fall back too much, but fell back enough that it made a good impact. And right now he's he's trying to play damage control, really, and, and, and pass this 81, who's been on an absolute tear so far this race. So we'll have to see uh, what, what comes about this battle and, and who comes out on top and uh, who can continue to move forward. That's passing Sabat Osgin for fourth place. He disposes of him. Now his sights are set on Luke Rainey, the 88, who's really just kind of been third place all day long, Trey. We haven't really talked about Luke, but he's just quietly been there third, fourth, fifth, and just kind of hanging around trying to get the points he needs. And right there, there he is, third place. Very quiet day. It's kind of crazy to say it's a quiet day if you're in third place, but Luke's just kind of settling right there and taking what he's going to get. Yeah, he's just he's just he's just been there, you know. It's it's just it's just Luke being Luke, who's having a a, a day that is a, 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 would be a good finish if they finish out here, but at the same time, just really really hasn't moved from his uh, his starting spot. It's like how last season he finished second in points and was chasing down points under Brett Zero to, to the very end, and no one really talked about that until the, the last few races. That's just how how Luke Rennie performs. He you know he can have a good season, he can have good runs, but it's always quiet when he does it. Yeah, definitely. And um, right now he's uh, he's he's kind of in his happy place, right? But uh, he, he might want to look in the mirror because he's got a hard charging Roush Roush driver uh, uh, coming in his mirror. Yeah, if there's one driver he wants to beat today, it's the guy who's leading the points. Jay Renner was trying to extend that points lead even more. Second place in points was his teammate Zach DeLello. And right now DeLello is back in 14th place. So Randall would gain points on him as it stands. He gained points on most people in the standings here today. Evan Hunter continues to lead with 11 laps to go. He's led all but just a few laps for pit stops. He leads off Mathis Wells and Luke Rainey. Then you have Jay Rando. Oskin still hanging tough in fifth, trying to keep it over Chris Jericho. We see Conrad Evans in seventh place. Riley Spurley Tube is in eighth. Collins back up to ninth, and the battle for tenth is on. Jordan Stout has it, but Jude Martinelli wants to take it away. And right behind them is Keyshawn Richardson in eleventh place, or excuse me, twelfth place. And then Kukulon trying to come back up through the field in thirteenth. Benny Lynn still hanging tough inside the top fifteen. Crown Jr. through the field nicely. We see Tim Gary making a pass on Matthew Burnett right there. That's for uh, that's for seventeenth place. 
what did I say last week on the broadcast that made I think it was Jack Haas a, a little of was, was it? Did I call one of the did I call Keyshawn uh, uh Roush R? Is that what it was? I I think I said something. You, I, I think you said something about a Roush. But you didn't a Roush. say you didn't That's say a Roush car. I think I just said a Roush. And he was like, why are, was, why are all, all us other guys, you know, Penske Jasper cars or whatever, and they're just a Roush. I just, I just thought about that. And, um, you know what? It was, it was a, um, it was, a, it was an in the moment thing. And, uh, I, I was thinking about doing it more just, just to see, uh, how long I could last before he kind of loses his stuff. He, <laughs> we, we have a weekly meeting, you know, owner's meeting and, um, he, he brought it up and I was just like, huh, I didn't even know I said that. Well, uh, in your weekly owner meeting. For the next week, Evan Hunter might be the happiest man because he's been out front cruising along. He's led basically every lap under green. The only laps he didn't lead so far here today are the ones that happened under pit cycles. Randall got to lead a lap. Hunter Reed got to lead a lap. And uh, so did, I believe, Tyler Belladonna. When he was on pit road, he passed Hunter Reed and got to lead a lap. But otherwise, it's been all Evan Hunter here today at Las Vegas. We got the Dominic car out front from the start. He's not looked back. But, Trey, it's still close enough where if something happens to that 36, Wells will be right there to pounce. But time is ticking, Trey. Just seven laps to go here at Las Vegas. I mean, remember what happened when we hit halfway, right? The the 36 was still out front, but that 97 really started to make a lot of the passing attempts right here. So we'll have to see come near the end of this race if it's the same situation that you know he has he has a good short and medium run car, and in the long run is is all right. But there was just some drivers that are a little bit better on the long run that uh, could make a late race pass. I have to say, I think Luke Rennie's really starting to close, and he's starting to push hard. Mathis Wells, remember, is on a little bit older tires than the guys around him, so maybe he's not able to push as hard as the guys around, but definitely Luke Rainey is pushing that car to the limit now, trying to get up there and maybe push Mathis Wells into a mistake or push him towards Evan Hunter so that those two can maybe make some contact and the 88 can be by. Eli Bright is 17 laps down on pit road. There was obviously some big mechanical issue that happened on the number eight car. That it wasn't just something simple. They haven't been able to fix it, so... Major issues for Eli Bright, and that average finish position here at Las Vegas is going to continue to be a very poor one. Yeah, I uh, I, I don't think it was me blaming or picking him. That's clearly not what it was. And uh, it's, it's oh, oh whoa, Ty whoa. Tyler Belladonna hit by Ryan Wilson. What happened here? No, no clue. What could I, the 15 all torn up. These are guys towards the back of the field. Belladonna on the pit road. We stay green for now. I did see some debris fly. However, it might have fallen onto the apron and off the racetrack. We have five laps to go here at Las Vegas. Evan Hunter still pacing the field. Two and a half tenths up on Mathis Wells. A great bout for fifth is brewing. Conrad Evans, Trey, has flown on the second run of the race. He's got by Chris Jericho. He's looking for Sabet Oskin. That would be the top five finish. And Evans hasn't been all that great as of late in the next Hill Cup Series. But here he is, Trey, late in the going with four laps to go. Really hammering on the back bumper that he won. Yeah, you want to talk about another really quiet day who is coming from a driver who at one point in his career was not a very quiet guy, right? Evan, or, or Conrad Evans, that is, is uh, absolutely cruising through this right now. I think they definitely made adjustments for the long run, and they are they are working in his favor as he's making a move right now for, like you said, fifth place, who it should clear himself off a of turn two right here. As he does, he is going to drive away from that 81. And close battle for a second. Heating up. Luke Rennie is right there on Mathis Wells. Looking to make a pass work as they go through turns three and four. This time by just two laps left for Evan Hunter to cap off a perfect day here in Las Vegas and win the first Nextel Challenge race of the season. Here comes Luke Rennie for second on Mathis Wells into turns one and two. Trying to take it away, trying to get every point he can. They race side by side and Trey Evan Hunter has gotten away. That lead's going to grow in this lap as we head to the white flag this time by at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Yeah, I mean, at this point right now, Evan Hunter's just got to hit his marks and have a clean lap and a half, or even lap and a quarter at this point, right? And he's going to get this win. But right now, this battle for second place is starting to heat up. That's allowing the 97 to come in. Joe, we're going to have three cars battling for one position. Who's going to come out on top? White flag, final lap of Las Vegas. Side by side for a second with Randall waiting in the wings if those two make contact. They work through turns, went in too well. Behind them, great bout for sixth place. Riley Spurgeon moved up to seventh by Chris Jericho and is hunting down Simon Oskin. Evans has pulled away from that. They're still side by side for a second into turns three and four. Rainey on the bottom. Wells up top. In front of them, Evan Hunter's dominated here today from pole position. He comes off turn number four with the lead. The checker flag is his. Evan Hunter wins at Las Vegas. And look at those battles for position inside the top ten. Hey. <laughs> 
they were uh, scrapping for every position they can. The only one I think that was kind of in a safe space was was the leader. Yeah, Evan Hunter was the only. I think he was the only driver here today that was safe basically throughout the whole race. I think there was only one one time where a car was side by side with him for the race lead, and that was Rando for about a quarter, and that was it. Yeah, he kind of he kind of cleared himself off at two, and then uh, after that, he had really no contest other than uh, making the spots back up for those pit road cycles. But even then, it wasn't really that much. No, it was not. Evan Hunter wins here today at Las Vegas in dominating fashion, leading all but three laps in route to victory in the UAW Downler Collector 400 trade. We know he's gonna be the guy to go for that 19 million million dollar bonus if he can. Uh, if he can accomplish that, if he can win all five of the next Tell Challenge races, he gets to walk home with the $19 million prize tag. I mean, I think it's more of a brag saying you won five races in one season than, <laughs> than, the, than it says when you won the uh, the money. But at the same time, Joe, that's that's a lot of money. Yes, it is. And we'll have to see if uh, if he can do that over the course of this season. Obviously, that's a, that's a very tall task, but he still has a chance if he wins two of them to get a million dollars and maybe up to, you know, a few more million dollars if he can get a few of those wins. But we'll take a look now at the finishing results from the UAW Daimler Chrysler 400 here at Las Vegas. Obviously, Evan Hunter, the one to reign supreme, dominating here today and getting back to victory lane in that number 36 car. Second place to Luke Rainey in the number 88. Uh, once again, quiet day, but he stole a second from Mathis Wells there at the end. Wells ends up continuing his great string of Las Vegas races in third place. Jay Brando ends up with a solid fourth to continue to extend that points lead. And a top five for Conrad Evans, who really stole a top five there at the end. Simon Osgan barely hung on for sixth place. And th that's that's a great day for Fitz Brown Show Racing, something they needed because they were down near the top 35 in points cutoff. 8th place goes, or 7th place to Riley Sprinto, 8th to Chris Jericho. He was basically top 10 all day, but really started to fade there late. Mitchell Collins and Jude Martinelli for Penske Jasper Racing get top 10s, with Collins in 9th and Martinelli a 2nd straight Las Vegas top 10 finish. Jordan Stout, solid day in 11th. Keyshawn Richardson and Zerka Delello, two more teammates, are 12th and 13th. Then Tim Gary in 14th, Anthony Hernandez a top 15, the highest he was all day long. Kukulon dropped back. You see the two petty cars, ended up 17th and 18th, very solid after where they started. Drew Webb a top 20, he really came alive in the second half of the race. And Ahmed Walid gets a top 20 after failing inspection twice. We'll have to see what penalties come from that over the week. Uh, 300 cars down here, Thompson, Strickland, Burnett, 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Their highest finisher today was Drew Webb in 19th. So not a good day, Frederick Morrisport. See, uh... Justin Atkins down here. Justin Zidell down here. Zachary Fitoir Sr. There's Angel Gutierrez, a very solid day, top 30. Jerry Chen got a few spots back, but just not the day Hendrick Morrisports is looking for, especially after winning the last two races on the season. Then you look at uh, Sarah Kirchner in the 33 down here. She had a very, very dismal pit stop in second half of the race. The uh, two Everham cars finished right together. You see Nathan Stapleton, Matt Tuck, and Max Davis, and then some extracurricular activities on the racetrack with Belladonna getting damaged in the rear. Ryan Wilson and Eli Bright, bad day for DEI. 41st, 42nd with Wilson out. Eli Bright, with all those issues, finishes 24 laps down. And we'll have to see what that issue was. You know, obviously, he came down pit road fine, and it had to be something that he broke on pit road that caused the issue. Could have been something with a gear, something with a, an axle, something you have to think like that. As we now go take a look at the points after just six races in. And Jay Brando, another top five finish this season, is able to extend that point seat tray. Brando is absolutely on fire through these first six races, but there's still 26 to go for the rest of the field to try and chase him down. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see who uh, who else can start on a hot streak here. But right now, Joe, that uh, Roush a Roush is, uh, is 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 starting to look strong here and uh, almost unbeatable. But uh, we've learned to uh, never count out until it's the last race of the season. That is true. And how about Evan Hunter, though, here today? His, uh, another victory on his career. And how about one that didn't come on a super speedway drafting style racetrack? He, he's won at Talladega twice. He won the 500 last season. Wondering, can Evan Hunter win on a non-drafting track? Well, he did here today at an intermediate downforce style racetrack at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Track where he's not been all that great over his career. His uh, finishes here, 36th, 40th, 42nd, and 5th. Now he gets to add first to that column as Evan Hunter gets the victory lane here at Las Vegas. Gets Dodge their first win of the season as well. It had been a, a Ford and Chevy show up to this point. Dodge now throws their hat to the ring with a win here today. Next week on JRTV, hopefully on time, on Sunday, 
we're going to be going racing at the Phoenix International Raceway for the Checker Auto Parts 500. The last few seasons, it's been later in the season, kind of in the summer. But now it's in the spring to hopefully produce some cooler temperatures. We'll have to see how the drivers handle Phoenix next week on JRTV. But today, it's all about Evan Hunter, his first victory of the season in dominating fashion here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Congratulations to MB2 on their great performance here today with Evan Hunter for Trey Bardo. I'm Joe Rakowski. So long from Las Vegas, but tune into JRTV next week for another West Coast race at Phoenix.